Welcome to Chef Tip Tuesday with Chef Veronica. We'll be getting started in about 15 seconds. Thank you and welcome to my live. Hey, LaShawn. Hey, Trina. Right, you all tired this week. <laughs> they love, I know I told you, but... um. They loved your cake. They loved it. Them folks was tearing that cake up. Well, you know your cake is always good and it's always consistent. That's why I love ordering them and sharing them with my clients. That's Trina Ponder with T-Mom Cakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get started. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for tuning in last week. I don't know what happened when I went to save the video, but it didn't save. I don't know. That's the first time that it has ever happened. But um, I'm working with a guy and he's um, gave me some tools to see how I can upload it on YouTube. So I will be trying that again today. But whatever the case, if... Um, all else fails, I'll just have to have Annette Holloman back on the live again because it was some good information. So I want to talk to you about two things that I hear a lot of people struggling with making. Um, it's the G and the R. <laughs> so people always uh, mention to me about making grits. And um, I've heard it so many times. They said, my grits never come out right. So that's why I don't really make them and I don't eat them because I don't like the way they taste. Well, I'm going to give you the key for the grits. The key to the grits is this. First of all, use old-fashioned grits because quick grits, it does have a gritty taste and it's not going to give you that home-style flavor, if you know what I mean. It's just an instant, a, a quick fix. Now, don't get me wrong. If you like instant, then do that. But if you're looking for that home-style grits that you just make you say, uh-uh-uh, Go with an old-fashioned style grit. And what you do with the grits is this. You want to boil the water first. Boil the water with your salt already in the water. Once it starts to boil, this is a main key. You have to pour the grits slow. Very, very slow. The moment you start start pouring them fast, the every it's going to clunk up and you're not going to be able to get around the lumps in your grits. So you're pouring the grits in very slow. You put a little bit in, you stir. And you keep on stirring. stirring. You're doing that consistently because you want to keep the grits moving around in the water. Because remember, the water is already hot. So the water is tending to cook your grits, which is what you want it to do. But you want to pour the grits in the water very, very slow. Now, I hear people that say, well, I don't put butter in my grits. Um, that's not my story. I like butter in my grits. I do use unsalted butter, though. So that um, that's how you do the grits. And then once you get them, the grits in there, you pour them all in there slowly and you're stirring and you're stirring, then you want to turn the heat down very low because now you want it to simmer for about 20 minutes, but you want to constantly be stirring the grits. So that's the tidbit for the grits, showing you how to make the perfect grits. Um, some people add milk to their grits to make them creamy. Some people add sour cream. People do a whole bunch of stuff to make their grits um, creamy and get that taste. But it's totally up to you how you want to make the grits. Hey, Barbara. So um, I have my recipe on how I do it, but to keep them from getting clunky and making them gritty, you want to make sure the water is boiling and then you want to pour the grits in very slow. That is the key. So now let's talk about the R. That is rice. I hear a lot of people talk about rice. A lot of people use success rice that's in the bag. Don't get me wrong. I used to use it all the time until I found my saving grace, which is, um, I buy it from Sam's Club. It's called Par 
excellent rice. It's a long, uh, um, premium long grain rice. And it always cook to perfection. It never fails. Now, the thing with this rice, and all, and all rice is not the same. Some rice tell you to let the water boil first. Then some other rice tell you no. You have to put the rice in there with the liquid and let it cook with the lid on it until some till the, it starts boiling and the water absorbs, and then you turn it down to a low temperature. So uh, make sure you always looking at the um, directions on how to cook an item. You know, a lot of times people say, well, I don't, you know, I cook how I cook and I don't look at the ingredients how it's supposed to be cooked. One thing you want to do, you always want to look at the instructions on how to do it and then you can change it once you get started. But for the most part, to make sure you don't have an effort fail, you want to make sure you look at the instructions on how to make it. So that par excellent rice. Thank you for tagging that there, Barbara. You can buy it from, um, buy it, purchase it at Sam's Club. They sell it at GFS, but it's always to perfection. And like I said, you put the liquid in with the rice and everything else. And then what I do after I cook the rice and it's done and I let it sit so it can absorb the rest of the water, then that's when I season my rice. Season it with a vegetable seasoning to give it more flavor. So those are your tips for your grits and your rice. If you have any questions, feel free to post it down right here in the comments. But I know I to mention to you that I'm going to be talking about customer service for a few weeks. So I want to hit on a um, one customer service tip. It seems like my lighting is not right. My husband always tells me that it's good. Oh, there you go. It was kind of dark. So um, I want to talk to you about customer service. I want to talk about contract versus money. So here it is. You're, I'm the business owner, and I'm doing a service for you. If you ask me for a contract, I need to produce a contract. I think all business owners should have a contract. You have to protect yourself, and you have to protect your client. Now, you will have clients that you do business with on a regular. You have relationships with these business owners. And it may just be a small thing. So, for example, with me, a small drop-off for about 10 to 15 people. If you ask for a contract, yes, I will give you a contract. However, I will give you a proposal with everything on it, showing you exactly what you're getting. So, I use them. I interchange the two. So, if it's a smaller event... I'll do the proposal and I'll give it to you and I'll have the breakdown on there. If it's a larger event, I will have that contract for you. However, if you ask for a contract and it is a small event, I will produce a contract. It's only right as a business owner, if a client wants a contract to give them a contract, you don't know why they want the contract. And it doesn't matter because this is how you're handling your business. This is how you're protecting your customer. This is how you're protecting yourself as a business owner as well. So if you don't have a contract, you want to get you a contract. You want to make sure that you have all of those tools that make you professional. You know, you go people, even let's talk about invoices. You want to find your invoice company or invoice um, app that will create an invoice for you and give you a very professional look that will allow you to automatically send it right to the client. And when they look at it, it look like you're in business and you're looking to do business. And it's all about presentation. I don't care, me personally, what it comes down to, even far as an invoice and a contract, it's about presentation. It's about showing your brand. Your logo should be on your um, invoice. So people, when they know, when they see it, they know it's you. I we have um I had a friend of mine um to create my logo and to create a document for my um menu. He did that. I sent him all the information, then he put it in the format and made it pretty. And that's what I told him. I said, I want you to take this information and I want you to make it pretty. I want you to make it stand out for where the heart is, and I want my logo on it. So as soon as when I send out my proposal on the first page, it's a big heart, just like this right here on my jacket. 
it's a big heart. So people automatically know when they see that heart, they know it's where the heart is. I've even, we've even had people to come up to us at other events and they like, um, no, I was at an event. We saw you there. I don't remember the name, but I remember that heart. So you always, um, and as I mentioned before, when you're going out to the stores and things, have on your um, t-shirts or, you know, if you're about your business, show that you're about your business. If you don't have any t-shirts or polo shirts or a hoodie, we just invested in hoodies because sometimes my husband, husband and I, we go out and we do events and it may be late at night. So him and I, we have hoodies. My delivery person has a hoodie. And it has the logo on it in our name on the other side. So you always want to be building your brand, giving your brand that professional look. And you always want to be a service to your clients. So by being a service to your clients, you want to make sure that you're able to produce a contract if they ask for one. What you don't want to do, let's say, and you want to get ahead of the game. Get your contract now. Get it in place. You're going to, well, me, I'm constantly changing my um, contract. I change it probably two or three times a year. When I first started, I was changing it all the time. And the reason why is because you'll show up at, any, at an event, working a job, and something to come up that you never thought of. And now here it is, you're faced with this. So then you know, okay, I need to alter my um, contract a little bit. I need, if you don't have, now that we've gone through a pandemic, whoever thought that we would go through a pandemic? Not in a million years in the United States. I've never thought of it. However, now that we have gone through one, I've changed my contract. It does cover pandemic. So, um, but at the same time, you always want to do things at your discretion. You know, you never, you always want to be fair to your clients. And that's what keeps your clients coming back to you because you're fair, you're integr integral, and they appreciate you doing business with them and making everything nice for them. And that's why people hire, most people hire companies because they don't want to do it, and they but they still want it to be nice. So you have to be that look, you have to be that face, you have to go out and you have to build your brand to have your brand out here where it stands and people know that what you stand for because people when they know that our thing is presentation is everything and we're going to get all the way down to the tablecloth hitting the floor all the way around just that little thing if it's crooked oh we need to move everything if we can't adjust it and get it right we need to move everything because i know how i how i am when I, if I hire someone to do an event for me, I know the expectation that I'm looking for when I come into that place. I'm looking for things to be a certain way. So I want to give off that same experience, that same energy that I would expect when I come into a place. So you want to always be able to flip it around to where if this was you on the other side, how would you want to be dealt with? So those are your chef tips for today. Remember that rice, boil that water, get it boiling before you pour your grits in and make sure you pour your grits in slow. If you're looking for a nice rice that cooks to perfection all the time, you want to get you that parboil from Sam's Club. GFS, they may have it at other places, but I know those are my go-to places where I know that I can get it. And while I'm at it, pasta, Barilla pasta is the only pasta that I use when I'm cooking because it's always, it always, it always, always, always cook to perfection. I don't have to worry about it sticking. I don't have to worry about it going flat. I know that it's always going to do exactly what I want it to do, and it's going to give that professional look. Are there any questions? I'm going to open up the floor. If you have any questions for me, feel free to put it in the comments, and I'll answer it. I'll take about another minute, and if not, I will see you all next Tuesday at 1230. Hey, Miss um, K. 
I thank you all for plugging in. Hey, Jerome. You know, Barbara, I tried, I, you know, I stepped into the meal prep and was doing it, but it was so tedious. So what I do as opposed to doing a meal prep, what I do now is I do quarter pans and I do half a pans. And then that allowed the client to take those pans and then they, when they get it home, so let's say you have a half a pan of chicken with 14 chicken breasts in it, five ounce chicken breasts. Then when you get the pan home, then you take it and put it into your meal prep pans and separate it. So that was the best way that I knew how to be able to um, do it and it not be so tedious. But I will tell you one thing that you can do is... It's all about the prep. It's all about preparing ahead of time. I used to cook on Sundays, and I would cook enough food to last us through Thursday. And um, that's a nice thing to do if you're looking to make it easy, easier on yourself for your family. And you, and a crock pot is a lifesaver because you can always put a one pot meal in a crock pot. Start it off in the morning time, and then by five o'clock in the evening, to die, you have a whole meal. Hey, cuz. Hey, Darcel. Hey, Tina. Yeah, so yeah, that's um, that's the best thing to do. But like I said, I do quarter pans, which serve about eight to ten people, and then I do half a pans that serve about twenty to twenty-five people. It just depends on the serving size that you're getting. But it um, it worked out. I was doing that for a lady, and she would order pan, half a pans of things and then she would get it home and measure it when she got it home and put it into her dishes, her di her um, prep dishes, and then she would put them into the refrigerator that way. And she even um, froze some of them. So, that does work. Oh yeah, that um, that pot roast goes good in that crock pot. It's, it's so many recipes out here that you can actually Google about a crock pot, a one pot dish. And I never even knew, <laughs> I have a niece that she makes um, buffalo chicken dip and she makes it in her crock pot and it is really, really good. I never even thought to make that in a crock pot. Yep, anytime. Yeah, so I, I do have, I was actually before the pandemic hit, I was teaching an after school program, a a chef, uh, what was it? A chef, uh, uh, culinary club after school program at Warrensville. Hi, we were doing it at the high school, but it was for the middle school and the high school. So on Tuesday, we would do the middle school. And on Thursday, I would do the high school. And it was all about healthy eating. So what I did was I took all different types of meals that kids enjoy eating and I made it a healthy meal. So you can pretty much take any dish and make it a healthier dish. So for example, if you're making spaghetti and you don't want to use white pasta, they actually have a pasta that is made with spinach, zucchini, and squash. And it's green, but it really, really tastes good. And I had um, my students, that was, I think, the second dish that we made. And so... When we came, when I came out with the green pasta, they was like, "Oh, don't nobody, nobody gonna eat that. I don't want to eat that. I don't." I said, "You don't even know what it tastes like, because this class is based on healthier choices. Just try it." And let me tell you, those kids love that pasta. They couldn't even tell if you weren't looking at the color, you wouldn't even have known that it was um, a healthier pasta. So, um, and even during that class, I taught them how to. We didn't cook with salt. And so um, one of the students in the class was telling her mom, she said, um, I don't know about this chef. She talking about, we don't cook with chef. I don't know, if, we don't cook with salt. So her mom came to me and told me about it later. She was laughing. She said, um, after we finished the meal, her daughter whispered in her ear and said, oh, that chef could cook. And we didn't even use salt. So it's a whole lot of seasonings out here that you can use that, doesn't even have salt in them. I'm not against salt, 
But just if you're making healthier choices and you have someone that's dealing with high blood pressure and things like that, hey, Connie, you want to um, make those changes and you do a seesaw because that's definitely better than the alternative. And also another um, ingredient, another seasoning that you can use that gives you that taste of salt is celery seeds. Celery seeds has a salt taste. Mustard seasoning has a salt taste. So you can use those type of things in the place of salt if you have restrictions where you can't have any salt. Yeah, Trina, that shoulder would probably be real good. If you need a taster, I'll taste it. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, Brandon is very important. Very important, Connie. It's all about the brand and it's all about getting your name out here in the forefront and building your brand. Because if you don't build it, nobody's going to build it for you. Are there any other questions? Yeah, they have um, yeah, celery and mustard seeds. They even have a powdered celery seasoning and they have a powdered mustard seasoning there's a um seasoning store on chagrin it's called pinsky pinsy yeah pinsy it's right on chagrin in the plaza right um pavilion not no the plaza um with tj maxx and quirky's and lenny's it's right there they have a ton of seasonings you can actually go online to their website pinsy.com and look at their seat. They have a ton of them. And they used to give out recipes with all of their, um, like they'll tell you, if you use this Tuscan seasoning, here's a recipe that you can use this seasoning on. And it tastes very well. Okay, so if that's it, I thank you all for tuning in. Chef Tip Tuesday with Veronica. And I will see you all next Tuesday. Thank you.